room for error or ambiguity everything should be crystal clear and the last one is frequency of use types of plan based on frequency of use which means one time plan specifically designed to meet the needs of unique situation and the biggest example we already talked about is how we can continue to our work during covid-19 how we can we still are providing online lectures from 3 years we are coping up with the change right and then standing plans ongoing plans that provide guidance for activities performed repeatedly how i need to you know uh, give my 100% make my students understand everything a normal on the campus class that's it but what what if covid-19 occurs hit shanghai and shanghai in china is closing the borders we go back to our houses our countries and then how to continue our uh, learning process education use of online portals different kind you know different kinds of zoom zoom and then whoop meeting all right so this single plan used like we are using blackboard all right to facilitate our online platform learning uh, learning platform so that is one time and i hope and i can predict that after like uh, one or maybe 1.5 years we will be saying bye bye to blackboard and also whoop meeting and zoom meeting and zoom meeting and then we will be back to our standing plan so justin and justin you understand the frequency of use pablo nika uh, jangwe julia mark yeah. understand okay now the contingency factors in planning so now thing is we planned very well right there is a formal planning we did that we categorized plans and goals we also select the types and everything is going well all of a sudden your plans are not working according to the performance like i told you in our previous slide so there is some external factor right so plans also differ based on level of organization like which level you are either you are on from the top level management or either you are on lower level or middle level so plan differs and also the impact of external environment and its uncertainty also differs so if organizations environment has more uncertain in which uncertainty means you are not sure about the outcome and you are not sure about the risk as well in which you don't know the outcome and you don't know the uh, uh, it's it's the risk involved we call this uncertainty which is the highest form of ambiguity and nowadays when technology is changing rapidly so fast we are using the word uncertainty which which means anything can be changed so when anything can be changed and we talked about that a planning need at least the, the research shows that at least 4 years and in 4 years anything can happen rapidly the chances are that anything can happen rapidly right look at the covid-19 scenario we have nobody you know included in in their contingency planning and it happens and, and people are saying no oh, it's just 2 months 3 months Six months or maximum one year. Now still they are recovering from its aftershock. So it's wise to include 
contingency planning, emergency planning, if anything can happen. You always have a backup plan if anything happened to the plan A. So also the more current plans will affect future commitments, the longer time frame management should plan. The thing is, if your short term goals, they have uncertainty and you know the short term goals, when you achieve short term goals, then you are achieving the long term goals. And in short term goals, you have uncertainty, it is changing so fast, then of course your long term goals, long term planning, its time period is also it's automatically increased. So what kind of factors we should include in contingency? Number one, level in the organization, degree of environmental uncertainty, and the length of future commitments. The best can be explained here. So this picture shows how planning differs depending on the organizational level. So we have top level, middle level, first level. And we talked about the what is strategic planning and operational planning. Strategic planning, operational planning. So you see operational planning is mostly concerned with the first level or lower level manager. While the strategic planning is more concerned with the top level management. In between, there is a mix here. How much? you have to use the strategic planning and how much you have to use the operational planning. So as the manager rises in this hierarchy, so he is, he has to gain more knowledge related to strategic planning. How strategies are going to be oriented, how 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 what is the role of strategy in uh, in planning so strategic planning is mainly done by top level managers right and operational planning is mainly done by lower level or first level managers while in middle level managers it's a mix combination of both all right so objectives and goals Objectives and goals are the same thing, like I told you. What outcomes we need to achieve and how we need to achieve is the plan. So what outcomes, the desired outcomes for individual groups, for entire organizations is called objective. So they provide management with direction and serve as a means to measure the progress. Also serve as a control. This we need to achieve. So up till now, whether we have achieved it or not, it can serve as a control. So they are stated objectives and there are real objectives. Stated means what is written in the official objective. Officially, okay, you need to achieve, uh, okay, you need to, for example, uh, your monthly quota is that you need to sell 10 cars. What is the real objective? You are only able to sell 8 cars. So that is, you know that I can sell only 8 cars a month and the organization is now pushing me to sell 10 cars. So that is real objective and that is the stated objective, right? Which, which you actually can sell or you actually sold it eight cars, that is real objective, which, are you, which you are supposed to sell or you are, you are given the task to sell 10 cars, cars, it's called stated objective, right? So how you can achieve this? So there are two approaches. One is traditional approach and one is management by objective. So traditional approach, traditional approach, an approach to setting objectives in which top managers set objectives that then flow down towards the organization and then become sub goals for each organizational area. So the best thing you can understand is through a picture is that there are top level manager, middle level and lower level. So they decide goals, objectives, and then they send down to the middle level managers and then middle level 
managers send it to the first level or lower level manager so you see we need to improve our company's performance set by top level managers the middle level managers they said divisional and departmental what uh, what they, uh, divisional managers middle level i want to see significant improvement in the division profit so that is middle level lower level departmental managers increase in profit regardless of the means so they push their employees and employees don't worry about the quality just work fast so this is the traditional approach in which goal setting is done from the top management the management by objective the second approach is a, a process of setting mutually agreed upon goals using those goals to evaluate employees performance as well so in the top down approach if something bad happen you can easily blame the top management you know they have set unrealistic goals they know that you know they don't know because they don't face the customer we face the real situation so we know best the organization is giving us too much pressure so that kind of blame is now going to be shifted on you with the introduction of or with the establishment of mbo management by objective in which you set the goals and that goals it's the bottom up approach so they ask you how many cars you can sell you said eight okay how many do we you know there are many others so total they can sell okay they can sell 110 cars and how we can provide 110 cars in different locations and then middle level managers will tell you okay how many profit is going is, is going to be earned and the top level management will say that okay next year we will be earning 10% profit on selling of 110 cars so this kind of objective is called management by objective in which if these goals are not met employee performance is going to be judged in which in this case employee cannot back off from his own word because he is the one who is facing the real situation he is facing the clients he know the market dynamics what's going on in the market right so he cannot say that look i have i have given unrealistic you know goals because you chose yourself your goals right so mbo involves setting objectives that cascade down through the organization that are translated into operational 